dear friends we know it for the fact that you are very anxious to know the latest situation in kashmir let me tell you at the very beginning that we as kashmiri american do not know much more than what you know about the situation in kashmir because for the last 15 days kashmir is literally under siege it is cage as new york times has put it that kashmir has become the hell for the people of kashmir the valley of kashmir in particular 7 to 8 million people so for the last two weeks they have not been able to talk to each other they have not been able to come on the streets they have not been able to go to the mosques and they have not been able to purchase their necessities and there is no internet there is no social media and we were told that these 48 or 50000 indian troops which were deployed to kashmir within the past 2 to 3 weeks those are not army in uniform they do not belong even to the reserve police of india so we were told that they are rss people rss thugs who have been given this license to go to kashmir and do whatever they want to do as we all know that there are draconian laws in kashmir which has been documented even by the united nation high commissioner on human rights in the latest report which was issued in july 2019 and particularly jammu and kashmir special powers act which has given the impunity to any soldier in kashmir he can shoot anybody at his will and he is not accountable to anybody so that was for the armed forces now we were told that this is also the license given to these people who belong to rss but one thing is really very heartening over here that whatever the situation in kashmir whatever the little information is being trickled down through new delhi or through other social media outlets which is not really that widely available the international press has published the reports and the events and more importantly the consequences of this abrogation of article 30 370 and what could be the reaction of the people of kashmir so we were told that the leadership of people of kashmir in particular said ali gilani mirwaz umar farooq and mohammad yasin malik has sent a message from the detention center he is in jail in new delhi that we have to resist and we have to resist peacefully because our message was endorsed by a person no less important than the secretary general of united nations himself the people of kashmir the leadership of people of kashmir they have really conveyed the appreciation to the secretary general when he articulated the position of united nations which is nothing but the aspirations and the wish and the will of the people of kashmir when he was asked about article 37 370 so india was really thinking that now we have abrogated article 370 from today onwards kashmir is permanently the integral part of india antonio guterres made it clear no that is not the case in fact he said our position the position of united nations is that kashmir has to be resolved under the un charter and under united nations security council resolutions as we all know that week ago there was a special meeting of united nations security council and it was initiated by one of the most important permanent member of the security council china and we were told that out of 15 members of the security council 14 members were in agreement to have this meeting 
because if I'm not mistaken, you need to have the consensus of at least nine members of the Security Council in order to bring any issue to the Security Council debate. So 14 members gave the consent, including our government, United States of America. And we were told, as Chinese ambassador said it, he would not have said it unless it happened there. Chinese ambassador said before the press, soon after the conclusion of the meeting, this was the consensus. And what was the consensus? He said it, that Kashmir has to be resolved under UN Charter and under applicable United Nations Security Council resolutions. So my only point, my dear friends, is that we have the United Nations on our back. They have articulated the position of United Nations, which is exactly what the people of Kashmir want. Now it is our responsibility as Americans to come forward and do whatever we can, not only to ease the tension between India and Pakistan, but end these miseries of the people of Kashmir. New York Times, the hell in Kashmir, Washington Post says that Indian democracy is dead. So this time when we are going to meet our member of Congress, we don't need to tell them what I am telling you. We don't need to tell them what your friend or your father or your teacher or your leader has told you. Take the report of New York Times, Washington Post, Los Angeles Times, Guardian, not only the articles, they have published the editorials. And they said it's the most dangerous place right now on earth because everybody knows that both India and Pakistan are nuclear. When you meet the member of Congress, I am sure she or he already knows something about the Kashmir issue. Give them the report. Let him or her feel comfortable that what you are talking to him, it is based on the facts. Then tell him what he can do. The least he can do is he can write the letter on the basis of facts to Prime Minister Modi that this abrogation of 370 article is not acceptable because UN says so. And there is miseries on the streets of Kashmir because United Nations High Commissioner on Human Rights says so. So that letter from single congressman or a joint letter from multiple congressmen it can make a difference. After two weeks, the Congress is coming back. Every single member of Congress has the right, not the privilege, has the right to take the floor and speak on any damn issue we they do. Sometimes they talk about the birthdays party, they talk about anything, but if you are going to tell him, Congressman, this is a very serious matter. Here we have 1.3 billion people. It is their future at stake. Can you make a statement from the floor of the house? You can convince him as a constituent because right now you don't need to really come to Washington DC. You may have to walk maybe just a mile or two because they have the offices in their own constituency. If you are his constituent, go because he needs you right now. Because after two or three weeks, he's back to Washington DC. This time they are really open to their constituents. Tell them you are going to go back. Please make a statement. And every single congressman, he does not need the permission from any chairman. Any single congressman can have a hearing on any issue. And why not to have on Kashmir? Then every single congressman, he can invite all the staffers. He can invite all his colleagues, whether they come or not. But he has that privilege that he can have a briefing on Kashmir. As I told you, he does not need the permission from the chairman. But at the same time, we really would like to have the congressional hearing. Maybe if he's a member of the committee, he may not be able to hold the hearing, but he may be able to convince the chairman of the committee in order to hold the hearing. We have Tom Lanto's Commission on Human Rights, one of the most important human rights body at the Congress. This is the only commission, our only committee in the Congress which has equal chairman. They are two co-chairmen, one Democrat, one Republican. So you can, there are more than 100 members of Congress. They are the member of the commission. 
So to have a heading in the Tom Lantos Commission on Human Rights, that's also very easy and you can convince your congressman. And remember one thing, whether you are meeting a Republican congressman or a Democratic congressman, tell your Republican congressman what our President Donald Trump has said not once, not twice, not three times, four times. The last time he said was August 20th, 2019. And he said, not if India and Pakistan agrees. He made it clear. I want to mediate between India and Pakistan. And the first time he said very clearly, without any ambiguity, he said, I will be honored to mediate between India and Pakistan to help resolve what? These are the words of our president to help resolve that hot, hot tinderbox of Kashmir. If you are a Democrat, President Obama, when he was in New Delhi, Tell your democratic congressman, give him the facts that President Obama, who told him to say not in Washington DC, but in New Delhi on November 8, 2010, right in front of then the Prime Minister of India, Dr. Manmohan Singh. And in New Delhi, these are the words of our President, President Barack Obama, that the resolution of Kashmir is in the interest of India and Pakistan and the region and the United States of America. You should tell your Democratic Congressman. You should tell your Democratic Congressman then on October 30th, 2008, on MSNBC with Rachel Maddow at 9, 10 in the evening, go and see the Google. You can watch on the Google, there is three and a half minute segment on MSNBC between Rachel Maddow and Barack Obama. What did our president say? Our president said, President Barack Obama on national TV, which is available on the Google, I will facilitate an understanding between India and Pakistan to help resolve that hot, hot tinderbox of Kashmir to help resolve the Kashmir crisis. So here we have President Trump, here we have President Obama saying the same thing. And finally, let me tell you, President George H. Bush, he said the best. He said here in Washington, D.C., at Mayflower on February 22nd, 2008, before, 2006, before leaving for India, President George W. Bush. He said, we will accept that solution of Kashmir, which is acceptable to India, Pakistan, and the people of Kashmir. So ladies and gentlemen, when you meet your congressman, when you meet your uh, senator, these are the facts. Both Democrats and Republicans at the very highest level, head of the state level, they have accepted that Kashmir is a dispute. And one more important thing you can do. I know that you are monitoring what is going on in the press, which is very important. Share it on the social media. But there is one more important step that you have to take. Whenever there comes an article in the, any national press, for that matter, even in the, your local press or in editorial, write a letter to the editorial, to the editorial board write a letter to that particular newspaper that this is my point of view in the light of the article that has been published. Whether the editor published your letter or not, but editor is going to change his perception on Kashmir. Maybe next time he is going to or she is going to write an editorial on the base of the facts which you are going to give to them. And one more important thing, Kashmir is not a religious issue. Kashmir, if it was a religious issue, then why should Secretary General say that resolve it under applicable Security Council resolution? It's a human rights issue. It's a fundamental right of basic that has been given by the United Nations. So get involved in the interfaith alliances. Go to the churches. Go to the synagogues. Go to the temples. Temple means a religious place for Hindus. Tell them that we have this P. Chandam Baram, who was the Minister of Interior and Minister of 
uh, finance of government of India. And he said, soon after the abrogation of this Article 370, right in front of the Parliament House, tell these our friends from India. I have never said it. And I will never say it. And P. Chandabaram says, the abrogation of Article 370 is the beginning of the disintegration of India. He is a loyalist. He is a patriotic Indian. Maybe more patriotic than the Prime Minister Modi. Who made him to say so? As New York Times says, that abrogation of Article 37 is not only wrong, it is also dangerous. So my dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, please remember the people of Kashmir and suffering continues there. The Kashmiri Americans who are, we try our best to have any contact. Whenever we have any information, we are going to let you know. May God bless you. Thank you very much.